on the government side, a very strong message to the market and to the operators in particular that the government would support, and it's the first time in France, would support heavily the local authorities initiative just to make sure somebody is taking care from the very beginning of the digital divide of the non-profitable areas and, and there are many in France I mean it's a major part of the uh, of the country which is non-profitable for the market uh, something like 80 percent of the surface of the country is non-profitable so um, um, this, this announcement uh, uh, arrived in 2010, so two years ago, uh, and, and the, the government, uh, where I used to be earlier, uh, was very strong on that and also announced that uh, it, it, the, the, the local authorities PPP type of project, uh, public-private partnership type of project, would be financially supported by the, by the state. Um, on the map, you can see uh, the, some of the projects that are uh, at the forefront of uh, this action. Uh, the Brittany, the Normandy, um, in the center there is a mountain region which is called Auvergne, and uh, on, on the right part of the country also, uh, Haute-Savoie, which is a mountain, the Alps. So these are some of the first uh, regional type of project organized in, in a PPP mode um, with uh, obviously some uh, funding gap. Uh, they are not profitable, of course, but uh, the local authorities and the government have decided to put some private investment or private, uh, so, sorry, some public investment, pu public funding on that. Um, an interesting thing is that because it's PPP, the private sector, and in particular the operators, are closely involved in that because the regulation frame is exactly the same. The operators have to co-invest in these public, publicly led projects. So um, here, uh, this, this is really uh, talking about co-petition. Um, a few comments on that, but I probably already say that. Uh, in fact, the model creates competition. Uh, most of the public projects, I didn't say that, are complementary to, to the private ones. Uh, you, you can't see that on the map I showed, but um, obviously the operators are talking to the local authority and the reverse to make sure they are not doing both networks and implement uh, and roll out at, in the same area. There are tough discussions, in fact, because the question of the priority, uh, the, the, where is the priority in, in rolling out a network like that? It could be the, the company where uh, all the, uh, organization, the, the professional organizations are, or it could be the citizens, and not everybody has the same uh, vision on that. It could be also the public services, the, the public buildings. Uh, so there are some tough discussions, but all this is discussed in um, uh, everybody is around the table and, and we are making progress region by region. Um, as as uh, the European Commission said, the, the private operators need the support from local authorities on, on many operational aspects which, which are using the civil works that, for instance, uh, a city is doing for electricity or for maintaining the road or anything like that. So um, also f the PPPs cannot succeed if the private operators are not involved uh, involved in, in preparation and involved in commercialization. Uh, plus, all these networks need to be standardized. I think it's, uh, I don't stay long on that. So where are we now? Um, although uh, teenager, we see positive signs uh, and obviously some questions remain. Not surprisingly, the rollout in urban areas is uh, going quite uh, at, a, at a good pace. 
Uh, we, we have seen significant horizontal fiber deployment in 50 cities uh, using France Telecom ducts. So the asymmetric regulation tool has been quite efficient. Uh, in terms of number of FTTH lines, uh, we have 1.6 million. It's not much. We have 30 million households in France, so it's not much. But it's making progress. And more in interestingly, um, uh, a significant part, half of it, is operated by two operators. So two, offer, two service offer are um, present in half of this 1.6 million. And the cable TV plan has been upgraded up to almost 5 million uh, households. So it's a significant uh, footprint for ultra-fast broadband services. A few questions remain, like uh, the penetration rate. It's uh, quite disappointing. It's 14% on the FTTH, which is not much. It's 11% on the cable TV, FTTB, fiber to the building which is uh, even less. Um, we think that one of the, of the explanation in France is that in the urban areas, there is a very good ADSL, and an unbundled ADSL with low price, and people are happy with that. So it's probably uh, the area where the first deployment should not have happened, but the market wanted to go here. Um, a second, uh, second question, a second issue, is a digital divide. In fact, the operators say that they are not able to invest in the non-profitable areas, let it be PPP or anything. They, for operational reasons and financial reasons, they say they are not able to do everything together, which, which I can understand, by the way. But it just sounds a kind of uh, blackmail situation. And we have to find a way to get out of this kind of blocking situation uh, if the private operators don't co-invest in the uh, public networks. Obviously, uh, they, they couldn't uh, go, go on. So there is a question behind that. And we are extremely uh, attentive to uh, the European Commission initiative uh, on uh, what you call the CEF. Um, I don't know exactly what it means, but I don't remember what it means, but uh, this is some um, uh, very interesting initiative just to, to put some uh, uh, additional uh, financial, long-term financial resource on this topic. So what can be learned, and I will go fast in that, but we have five robust beliefs, although we are young in that story. First, the cable TV is a big threat. The cable TV uh, plant is a big threat for the incumbent, and it worked very well in France. But public project, public policy, is a very strong lever, a very big incentive on the private investment. The announcement of public initiative is a very big lever, at least it has been in France. Second uh, idea, symmetric regulation tool was a good choice, and we think this co-investment uh, system is working very well. The four operators have announced co-investment deals very publicly, and now they will implement that. Third, the more we did a good job on DSL and bundling in the previous year, the less attractive may appear FTTH service. Um, we don't believe in copper drop in price. We don't believe it's the good solution. Uh, it may have the reverse effect in France. What we strongly believe is that at a point of time, switch off has to be considered. And we are going to uh, test that in France in the next months on a city. Um, Fourth, we have a backhaul network issue in in many regions. Without backhaul, there is no ultra-fast broadband. So um, some uh, regions, some uh, areas in France did that just to accelerate the unbundling on DSL. But not all did that because the government at this time was not convinced this was uh, a long-term solution. 
And it is a long-term solution. We have to build that. So this is an issue, maybe not in, in any country, and I don't know about Greece, maybe not. But anyway, so in FRIFS, the government and European Commission have a major role to play setting up an uh, ambitious program like the digital agenda and ambitious financial tools. Uh, obviously, the market is not able to do everything. A last, one last question, uh, which infrastructure and services have the best potential to fuel growth and innovation throughout our economies in the next 50 years? So I give, I'll leave you with this question. Um, and the answer is, Leonidas? Yeah, okay, no, it's not the finance industry, come on. Thank you very much for your Thank attention. You.